A regular meeting of the City Council was held in person on Thursday, April 11th, 2024 at 7 o'clock p.m. for the purpose of transacting any and all business. Notice of this meeting was posted on April 9th, 2024 at 11.16. Is it not coming through? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Test. Good. A regular meeting of the City Council was held in person on Thursday, April 11th, 2024 at 7 o'clock p.m. for the purpose of transacting any and all business. Notice this meeting was posted on April 9th, 2024 at 1116 a.m. This meeting is being recorded and is live on SATV and Zoom unless technological issues interrupt the transmission. Councilor, councilors absent, none. Councilor President Hapworth presided. Councilor Varela moved to dispense with the, waiting of the waiving of the record of the previous meeting. All those in favor? Any opposed? The matter carries. President Hapworth requested that everyone please rise and recite the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councillor Davis. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Salem City Council honors this land as Namkeg, or fishing place, where generations of Namkeg people from the Pawtucket Band of the Massachusetts tribe lived and passed through for centuries. We acknowledge this is unceded indigenous land and also acknowledge the Massachusetts tribe who continue to honor and hold this land into the present. Salem City Council is committed to having ongoing meaningful dialogue with the indigenous peoples who have presence in Salem in order to dismantle the legacies of oppression and inequities that persist today. Public testimony. Public testimony is not to exceed 15 minutes. Public testimony is not a public hearing or question and answer period. Senate must occur 30 minutes prior to the meeting. The president shall, depending on the number of speakers, set a time limit not to exceed three minutes, which each individual presenting testimony must abide. We have 13 people signed up today. So that'll be a minute 15 each. Um, when we get to uh, the minute 15, I'll, I will unfortunately interrupt you. Um, it's not personal. Uh, we, we do have to move on, but please know that this is, uh, if you're here for the tour guide um, ordinance, this is a, the start of a very long process. Uh, there'll be more opportunities for public input, and you can always email the counselors if you have uh, further questions or, or concerns you want to pass along. Up first is David Pizzeni. We know you won't answer any questions regarding it, but plain and simple, the way you have written this ordinance, it is illegal, not only for the laws of licenses, but also for the First Amendment. Which means everyone in the room has the right to individually sue you. And plain and simple, more importantly, you can have them depositioned under oath regarding this and other issues. Anyone has any questions of this, please come up and ask me. And I, of course, encourage you to contact the HCLU to know that everything I'm telling you is true. Also, there are some people who can't speak because they were lied to about the sign-up process. Can we please fix this? Thank you, David. Up next is April Newman. I'm April Newman. 7 Ward Street, Salem. I'd like to take a second to point out the fact that you are giving multi-million dollar developers millions of dollars in tax breaks. You're also giving tax breaks to high-end businesses of tens of thousands of dollars. I actually watched you do it. I was sitting there a few weeks ago. So how can you justify attacking employees of what is primarily a bootstrap industry? That's all I have. Thank you, April. Up next is Jeff Lilly. Evening, thank you for allowing us an opportunity to speak. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of my fellow tour guides, tour owners here in the room whose concerns are valid. Uh, we feel distinctly as though we were left out of any conversation. Uh, I think the last time any of us had a conversation with any city councilors was a year and a half ago, and this blindsided a lot of us. We found out about it within the past 24 hours. And last night, big group chat, we're all foaming at the mouths. I'm glad to hear that this is going to council and there will be room for further discussion. But one of the big things is that none of us knew. We had to just passively find out that this was going on tonight. I don't know how we should have been informed, but as a small business owner, as a citizen of Salem, as a taxpayer, being completely blindsided by this and having no 
communication from the city council that you're putting our jobs and our livelihoods potentially at risk is disappointing. So hopefully in the future, there can be a better line of communication when these talks are gonna happen. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Daniel Fury. Thank you, I wanna echo uh, Jeff's sentiments as well. Uh, I have a um, book statement I wanna read from my wife, Lara Fury, who was not able to make it due to illness today. So despite numerous attempts over the past decade by the local tours to propose effective ways of cooperation with the city, we're continually having to fight against ineffective proposals to the detriment of our cooperation. We receive no notice or late notice when major changes are proposed or without any input from experts in the field or that a single benefit to our industry. We local companies work tirelessly to police ourselves while certain individuals receive no punishment for repeatedly breaking existing ordinances and the city turns a blind eye until new ordinances are proposed and also will not be enforced or enforced arbitrarily. The newest proposal of a pay to play model will only hurt the, the small local businesses who have been adhering to the guidelines set by the city for the past decade or more. And the large out of town companies will lead the fees or pass them on to the guides who work as independent contractors. It's a 1650% increase in fees per individual. It's, it's outrageous regardless, but the scale the rate is, uh, it will clearly affect uh, what each business differently. And it, it shouldn't matter if some can pay more for more guides. The playing field should be even. What we ask going forward is transparency from the city, and we've, which we've repeatedly requested, and, and a board directly responsible for tourism-related concerns with experts in the field and local input. Thank you, Daniel. Just thank you very much for your time. Up next is Kevin Harrington. All right, we'll move to the online. He was in, He was listed as in person. Uh, next in person, we have Beth Crowley. All right, good evening, respected members of the City Council. My name is Beth Crowley. I'm the owner of Witch City Walking Tours. I'm a public school teacher, a small business owner, and Salem resident. I've lived in this community for over 17 years. I own my own home and pay taxes in this city. I love Salem. I love everything about it. I care deeply about this city. I started this company as a student teacher in 2014, and today, in our 10-year anniversary, I employ 35 people. Unlike what another person just said, I will be taking these fees. I am a large business in, that lives here in Salem, and I I love this city. So my employees are educators, they are historians, they are parents, they are college students. And unfortunately, I, with these huge increase in fees, I'm now going to have to cut back, cut back on keeping our company open in the wintertime, which I do, and so people can feed their families. Uh, we donate $1,000 every single month. I ask my tour guides to choose a charitable, con a charitable company in Salem, such as the Salem Pantry, Historic Salem. I will have to cut that. My fees alone will be $13,000 per year. I can't afford that. I am a small business. I live in here in Salem, so I'm not one of these conglomerates from out of state. So I very much respect that we need to have the money come from somewhere, but we need to rethink this because it's simply not fair. And I honestly- Thank you, Beth. Thank you. William Ayer. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for setting this time aside for us. Uh, I speak to you today as many things. Someone who was born in Salem, someone who has lived within a handful of miles from where we stand their entire life. Someone who has seen Salem grow and flourish from the tourism industry. Someone who has seen people come from all over this planet to learn about our history, our culture, our nation to experience everything that Salem has to offer and to go home and share those beautiful memories with family and friends. I do not wish for us to lose those opportunities. I do not wish to see my fellow tour guides lose these opportunities. Many of us already ride the margin of survival. This world is only getting more expensive. I bought a gallon of milk yesterday and it cost me nearly $7. So this change for many of us could not be survived. It could not be endured. No matter how many cups of coffee we give up, no matter how many Netflix subscriptions we surrender, Many of us, myself included, would struggle to provide for our families, to meet our obligations, to live lives of, if not ease, then comfort. The comfort of knowing that we can get up each day and meet our obligations and make sure that our families and ourselves are safe and happy and surviving. Exactly one minute and 15 seconds. Thank you, William. 
Next is Stacy Kilb. Hi, thank you all for taking the time to um, take public comment in this forum. Um, I am in opposition of uh, this ordinance change. Um, if anybody recalls about last year, the tour guide companies, the Chamber of Commerce and many tour guides met uh, with the Salem Police Department and um, the mayor, and we discussed raising the fees from $10 to 50. And at that point, we also discussed some alternatives to do that, how tour guide companies felt singled out um, and other things that we could do. Some of us already, uh, the companies in this city already give back to um, the city, as, as Beth Crowley mentioned. Um, and I, this to me seems like it's coming from out of left field, so I hope we can refer to those earlier discussions um, in getting some guidance on where to go with this. Um, this is an 1,100% increase in tour guide fees, which seems rather exorbitant and unreasonable to me. Um, and as others have mentioned also would decrease on the amount of tours being run in the city, people being laid off and fewer educational opportunities for the tourists who are going to come to Salem anyway in October. So I- Thank you, Stacy. Up next is Samantha Page. <laughs> Hello, thank you for having us. I'm Samantha, and as a proud member of Salem Community, I feel that as a tour guide, I'm able to give visitors a wholesome, fun, and educational experience. I am originally from New Orleans, but that area is mainly known for its booze and its violence. And in recent years, unlike Salem, where you don't even have this kind of problem, even with the massive crowds, you still feel safe. I love giving my guests things to see and do instead of drinking their vacation away. I would like to mention that working for Witch City Walking Tours is a local company. It does boost our economy in many ways. It helps keep small businesses up and running, as well as provides a service for our visitors that does not involve drinking and riffraff. That being said, the fees that are being proposed will force many of us to have to seek other employment due to cutbacks that we'll have to incur with such large yearly fees. This will cause issues with both our employees as well as our employers, as employees will endure less available at tours and possibly even seasonal positions being cut when many of us rely on our year-round employment. I feel that everyone that works in Salem tourism, whether it be a museum or a guide, is, is what it takes to make Six Salem successful as far as a tourist town. We usually all work together in the greater good of the community, imposing such fees. Thank you, Sam. Ryan Sullivan. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ryan. Thank you all for letting us speak tonight. All I wanted to say is I appreciate that all we want to do is make Salem a better place for everyone, not just citizens, but as uh, for tourists that come here as well. What I would like to say is that we can all discuss a better way for us to address this matter, for it to be a safe and efficient October for everyone involved. I believe that this increase in fees is outrageous, understandable, but outrageous. And I think we can find ways to mitigate that without having tour guides and tour companies suffer so greatly. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Diane Sanchez. Hi, I'm just a little frustrated finding out about this because I'm trying very hard to be a very productive member of society and raise two sons to do the same. I have one that's in the United States Navy, he's 24 years old, and I have another that's 11 that came to this meeting so that he learns how all of this is done. We have a very large homeless population here in Salem, and I walk by them and I feel very, very grateful grateful that I have a job, and I'm grateful to Beth, who organized this company so that I have a job, and I'm putting my 11-year-old in school, a private school, because I'm not a huge fan of the Salem Public Schools, and I'd like him to be a successful member of society as well, and so I would like you to not enforce these um, fines and fees to the people that are working hard in Salem. Thank you so much. Thank you, Diane. And the last in-person one, uh, Giovanni Alabiso. 
Hi everyone, uh, forgive me, I have a little cold or something, so. Um, but uh, I do wanna ask about the intent of this and where it was really, what it's meant to do. Prevent more tour companies, uh, limit guides, where that's really gonna go, raise money, raise money to pay for enforcers to come and just watch us make sure we're doing the right thing. So, uh, in addition, buskers don't have to pay. So, teacher comes from Ohio, they don't have to pay to do a tour but we have to pay to do a tour, that doesn't seem fair. I'm good friends with Tad Baker. He thinks I'm, he highly respects me for what I do. And why, because he wrote a book, he's a professor, he gets to do a tour and I have to pay for it. He does it for free. So there's a lot of issues. The issue of 25 feet across, if two companies come, I come here, somebody comes right there, how does a cop know or one of the enforcers know who came first? So how we sort that out. There's a lot of issues with this whole ordinance. So, but that's all I have to say. Oh, and also I employ close to 20 people, <coughs> excuse me. So, and I donate to uh, the pantry, uh, oh, what, LifeBridge, several others. Uh, thank you, Giovanni. And beyond me, so beyond you. So thank you. Up next on Zoom, we have Cody McAllister. Cody, if you're on Zoom, please raise your hand and we'll allow you to speak. I'm here. You mute yourself. There you go. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, I wanted to just say I am a guide in Salem. Um, but I think what the issue that this is trying to address is the uh, continual growth of haunted happenings mm -hmm. um and i feel that it's unfair that you're making tour companies pay for uh prior concerns we've taken away buskers licensing we've also taken away to where we allow people who play loud music and gather crowds of 200 but they are not charged as well um and also all the restaurants bars and uh, activities in Salem during haunted happenings, there is nothing to do at night. Mm -hmm. So they get them all liquored up and they walk around the streets and destroy the city. And tour guides are the ones that actually are taking them and entertaining them and keeping them as a group and teaching about our history. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're charging the wrong people uh, in, in this situation. And so I would look at some other alternatives. We also have tons of out-of-state companies that are coming uh, that don't have nothing to do with the city of Salem having tours here. And so we are not, we're not, you know, we're, we're punishing our local people as opposed to charging $350 to all the out-of-state companies that bring people here to have a tour. And so I, I just Thank think you, it's kind of sending the wrong message. You know. That's the end of the public testimony for, for those of you, first of all, thank you all for, um, for giving your feedback and for showing up. Appreciate it. Um, you've all been heard. Um, but I do want to add, I, David, if you're, if you're going to be disruptive, do it within our, within our rules, please. Um, so, so I would say that just 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 if you're if this is your first time attending a city council meeting, uh, these items hit our agenda either through a councilor filing or in this case through the mayor filing, and then we as a body decide what to do with those with those matters. Typically, if it's something controversial, and we can never guarantee anything, but typically if it's something controversial, it'll go to committee so that we can discuss it as a body, decide what we want to do with it, if we want to change it, um, if we want to accept it, what recommendation we want to make back to the full council, and then it comes back to a future meeting. So you are. Welcome to stay with us here. We would love to have uh, a large crowd here, but if but um, if you have other things to do tonight, you are you know we we prob I would have to imagine I can never guarantee anything, but I have to imagine this will probably go to committee tonight. Um, thank you. Hearings none. Appointments and reappointments. We have held from the last meeting the mayor's appointment of Justin Bates to serve on the Conservation Commission for a term to expire on March 28th, 2027. Councilor Watsonfeld. Thank you, President Hapworth. Uh, I move that we confirm uh, Mr. Bates' appointment by roll call vote. 
Councilor Watson felt moves for confirmation by roll call vote under discussion. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Justin is relatively new to Salem, but has immediately jumped in with both feet. Uh, he is a, a really active uh, Ward 2 resident, I'm proud to say, and have had a lot of uh, great productive conversations with him. He has a really fascinating background. He's been a teacher. He's been involved in um, advocacy work. He's been involved in poli local politics before, and he actually has a, a, a subject matter expertise in the area. So I think he would be a wonderful addition to the Conservation Commission. I'm really excited about this uh, confirmation tonight. Any further discussion? Councilor Cohen. Uh, thank you, President Hepworth. Um, yeah, I think Justin will be great on the commission. I just want to remind people to spread the word. We have one more opening on the Conservation Commission because the state law dictates that they're limited in size. It's really difficult if they don't have a quorum. We have to do engineering reviews and other reviews. So anyone who knows someone who might be appropriate for this uh, commission, please ask them to submit their resume and cover letter. Any further discussion? Seeing none, on the appointment of Justin Bates to the Conservation Commission, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cohen? Yes. Councilor Davis? Yes. Councilor Harvey? Yes. Councilor Jerslow? Yes. Councilor Marco? Yes. Councilor Marcillo? Yes. Councilor Prosniewski? Yes. Councilor Stott? Yes. Councilor Varela? Yes. Councilor Watson Felt? Yes. And Councilor Hapworth? Yes. <laughs> On the appointment of Justin Bates to the Conservation Commission, we have 11 councillors voting, 11 in favor, none opposed. The matter carries. Councillor Watsonfeld. Thank you, President Hapworth. I move that we uh, suspend the rules and allow Mr. Bates to speak. Councillor Watsonfeld moves to suspend the rules. Seeing no objection, Councillor uh, Justin, are you? I believe Justin's here. Hey, all. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor's pleasure being here tonight. Just have a few quick words. Um, thank you for uh, considering my. Uh, uh, nomination of the Conservation Commission. Um, the Commission's mission to preserve and protect the natural resources of our community resonates deeply uh, with my values and professional experience. Uh, with a degree in geology, a uh, background in environmental education, and my current work in the energy efficiency space, I have a, a deep appreciation of the interconnectedness of our environment and the sustainable growth of our city. Um, I, I'm committed to leveraging my passion to the Commission's efforts in promoting conservation um, and safeguarding the ecological integrity of Salem for future generations. So again, I thank you for your uh, consideration. I look forward to uh, serving the city. Thank you, Justin. Further appointments or reappointments? With the mayor's reappointments of the following with terms, Joy Livermento Bryant um, on the Com Community Preservation Committee expires 5-10-26, Brendan Casey to the Traffic and Parking Commission 5-11-2027, and Aaron, Pat I'm sorry, Paternoster, Salem Housing Authority 3-28-29. Councilor Varela. Thank you, President Hepworth. I move that this be held under the rules. Councilor Varela moves this to be held under the rules. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Further appointments or reappointments? We have the mayor's reappointment of Stephen Havy to serve as a constable with a term to expire on March 18th, 2027. Councilor Varela. I'm sorry, Councilor Morcello. Thank you, President. I move that this be received and filed. Councilor Morcello moves this to be received and filed. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Communications from the mayor. We have an order that the sum of $60,000 is hereby transferred from the general fund balance reserved for free, free cash and appropriated to the following count in the capital improvement fund below for enhanced security at Salem Public Library and the CLC. Councilor Merkel. Thank you, President Hapworth. I move for suspension of the rules. Councilor Merkel moves to suspend the rules, seeing no objection. Councilor Merkel. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. I move for adoption. Councilor Merkel moves for adoption. Under discussion. Uh, thank you, President. Uh, this is the sixty thousand uh, dollars for the Salem Public Library and the CLC for enhanced security, and it's consistent with our work in the other municipal buildings. Uh, these efforts include access control systems, safety cameras, motion. Detective detection systems and alert buttons for staff. Uh, the amount requested is based on quotes received from bids solicited from several security installation firms last year. Uh, and it's the same work the council approved for the city hall and the annex, part of our ongoing efforts to keep employees and the public safe. 
and I move for adoption. Thank you. Any further discussion? On Councilor Merkel's motion for adoption, the sum of 60,000 be transferred from the general fund balance reserve for free cash to capital improvement fund. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Further communications from the mayor. We have an order that the sum of $51,552.87 be approved within the retirement stabilization fund vacation sick leave buyback account for an employee in the fire department. Councilor Merkel. Thank you, President Hapworth. I move for suspension of the rules. Council Merkel moves to suspend the rules. Seeing no objection, Council Merkel. Thank you, President Hapworth. I move for adoption. Council Merkel moves for adoption under discussion. Thank you. This is a contractual retirement buyback, uh, and we thank uh, Mr. Szechewicz uh, for his service with the Salem Fire Department. Any further discussion? Councilor Prosniewski. Um, Firefighter Sohowitz um, has uh, given the city a lifetime of service to the, uh, to the to the city, a very colorful one. And for those of you who don't know Bernie, um, well deserved. He was a very very good employee, and I would just want to wish him a happy retirement. Thank you. That's a high compliment from a former cop. Uh, any further discussion? On Councilor Merkel's motion for adoption, the sum of 51552 be appropriate when the Retirement Stabilization Fund Vacation Sick Leave Buyback Account. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Councilor Varela. Thank you. Thank you, President Hapworth. I would like to move that we go out of order to page 15 on the uh, second agenda item. Council Varela moves to go out of order to page 15. Seeing no objection. Sorry, Madam City Clerk. Um, on to page 15. The city planner submitted the following order relative to special, to special municipal employees. Council Varela. Thank you, President Papworth. Ordered, uh, city, city of Salem, April 11th, 2024. Ordered that the Environmental Consultants Beals and Thomas Incorporated of 144 Turnpike Road, South Borough, Massachusetts, are hereby designated as special municipal employees, so they may provide temporary consultant services to support the administration of the Salem Conservation Commission. And I move that this be adopted. Council Varela moves for adoption under discussion. Thank you. President Hapworth. Um, so after speaking to Tom Daniel, Amanda Chincola, as well as Tom Devine, uh, we do have a somewhat of a uh, leap of absence with our current conservation agent. And uh, as we all know, the work needs to go on um, when it comes to Conservation Commission. It's something that uh, is lively and we need to keep up with this. Uh, so in order to help and assist uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, job, uh, we're looking to uh, get Beals and Thomas in there to help out. Uh, just to follow up when it comes to a special uh, a special designated employee, uh, we do have a couple of people on the books as well as currently. Um, and the reason being that Beals and Thomas does represent certain entities here in the city as well, and we want to make sure that they have the opportunity to do that. Uh, after following up with Amanda, uh, there is a statute in general law that a special municipal employee cannot work more than 60 calendar days within a 365 day period. So it is limited. Um, this is somewhat urgent. Uh, we do have Mr. Devine here. If we so shall suspend the rules, if any counselors have any outstanding questions. Thank you. Council Varela moves to suspend the rules. Seeing no objection. Hi, Tom Devine, senior planner. <laughs> Um, the newly appointed member, Justin Bates, probably described the importance of the work of the Conservation Commission better than anyone could. Um, a good portion of the land area in Salem is jurisdictional for the Conservation Commission through state law and local ordinance. The Conservation Commission is very busy. It requires a lot of time and professional support and thoroughness, and uh, the planning department is doing its best to keep up with the work. Um, but. We, I am covering, I'm deeply underwater and um, I'm seeking to have somebody come in to provide the support. Thank you, Tom. Any, um, any questions for Mr. Devine? Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none. Uh, on Council Varela's motion for adoption of the order relative to special munis municipal employees, all those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. 
Council Barola. Thank you, President Halpert. I move that we resume the meeting and go back to page seven. Councilor Varela moves to go back, is it page six or seven? Set. Set. Go back to page seven, uh, seeing no objection. You just get there. We've ignored. Go ahead. I'll say further communications from the mayor. We've ignored that the sum of fifteen thousand four hundred and sixty-two dollars is hereby appropriated from the following receipts reserved for appropriation account to be transferred to the Park and Rec Golf Course contracted services for costs associated with a temporary golf cart lease. Council Merkel. Thank you, President Hapworth. I move a suspension of the rules. Council Merkel moves to suspend the rules. Seeing no objection, Council Merkel. Thank you, President Hapworth. I move for adoption. Council Merkel moves for adoption. Under discussion. Thank you. Uh, this request uh, came from Patricia O'Brien from the Parks and Rec Department, and it's requesting money from the Old Salem Greens Receipts Reserve Account for a two-month lease on gas golf car carts. Uh, part of the $60,000 is a $3,000 um, deposit. Uh, this will enable the golf course to continue to do business and provide carts until National Grid completes uh, the electric charging station project. Uh, and the fees collected will offset um, this expense by continuing use of the carts. Uh, so that that is um, what you, what this will cover. Just the gap the gap for the the gap in time for the use while National Grids completes the elect electric charging uh, capabilities. Thank you. Thank you, Council Merkel. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, on Council Merkel's motion for adoption, the sum of 15462 be appropriated from the receipts reserved for appropriate appropriation to the Park and Rec Golf Course Contracted Services Account. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Further communications from the mayor. We have an order to accept the donation from Biff Misho in the amount of $19,500 to the Salem Police Department to purchase drones. Council Merkel. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. I move for adoption. Council Merkel moves for adoption under discussion. Thank you, President Hapworth. Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Michard uh, from the Salem Witch Museum for his very generous donation to the Salem Police Department. I, I want to acknowledge this is not his first donation uh, well, that we've seen uh, come to the council from him. The last one was for the fire department. Uh, in the backup documentation, Chief Miller said that the drones enhanced their ability to save lives, protect property, and assist officers in keeping the public safe. And I also had a conversation with Chief Miller about it. And of note, uh, the default uh, for the drones is the audio would not be on, except for life-saving circumstances such as search and rescue. Uh, and he also said that um, the search and, rec search and rescue is his priority for this equipment. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, on Council Merkel's motion for adoption to accept the donation from Biff Michaud in the amount of $19,500 from the sale, to the Salem Police Department to purchase drones. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. And thank you, Biff. Further communications from the mayor? We have an ordinance to amend an ordinance relative to public guides. Council Morsillo. Thank you, President. I move that this be referred to the Committee on Community and Economic Development, co-posted with the Committee of the Whole. Council Merkel, Council Morsillo moves to refer to the Committee on Community and Economic Development, co-posted with the Committee of the Whole, under discussion. Um, just that, as we saw tonight, there's still a lot of discussion, and we need some public feedback on this. And um, Community and Economic Development really is a good committee for this. Any further discussion? Seeing none, on the motion to refer the tour guide ordinance to community, the Committee on Community and Economic Development, co-posted with the Committee of the Whole. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Further communications from the mayor. We have an ordinance to amend an ordinance relative to the fee schedule. Council Morsillo. Thank you, President. I move that this also be referred to the Committee on Economic Devel Community and Economic Development, co-posted with the Committee of the Whole. Council Morsillo moves to refer this to Committee on Community and Economic Development, co-posted with the Committee of the Whole. Any discussion? No. No. Any further discussion? Seeing none, on the motion to refer the fee schedule to the Committee on Community and Economic Development. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. 
further communications from the mayor. We have an ordinance to amend an ordinance relative to non-criminal disposition of ordinance violations. Council Marcello. Thank you. I move that this also be referred to the Committee on Community and Economic Development, co-posted with the Committee of the Whole. Council Marcello moves to refer to the Committee on Community and Economic Development, co-posted with the Committee of the Whole. Any discussion? No discussion. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On the motion to refer the ordinance amendment to ordin uh, sorry to the Committee on Community and Economic Development, co-posted with the Committee of the Whole. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Further communications from the mayor. We have an ordinance to amend an ordinance relative to water and sewers. Council Morsola. Thank you, President. I move that this be adopted for first passage. Councilor Mor Morsola moves for adoption by first passage. Any discussion? Thank you, President. Um, so the current ordinance for water and for, for the water meters is if there is a problem where they can't read your meter, they do an estimate, and the estimate is, is uh, written as 200 gallons per day per inhabitant. Um, and then for commercial or industrial meters, um, it's at the discretion, the, an estimate is done by the director for the daily volume. So this is not realistic right now. There's no way to know how many people live in a building. Um, and so what they've been trying to do is, is come up with some sort of an estimate and it's resulted in um, differences in how different people do it. And so some, when the meter finally gets fixed, some bills are, you know, they've been paying too much and so they have a credit and then other times it's they've been paying too little and they have a huge bill that they have to pay. So this is changing it so that there's a set way to do to use the history of, of your water meter um, to look back generally over the last 12 months um, and, and determine whether during that period of time there were times when um, the meter may have read high because there might have been a water leak so you take that out and so really come up with a good assessment of some sort of a an average use or, or an expected use for this time period when they couldn't get a reading for the meter. And so that's what this is doing. It's setting up this the language that helps them to do that. Um, if he, see, I actually talked to Sam about this in the engineering department, and he said, of course, that they'll look if you're a new resident, and so, um, you know, maybe there's one or two people living where a family lived before. Um, they'll look at your usage for the past couple of months to come up with some sort of an estimate. Um, he also wanted to make, you know, make clear that the Neptune meters are getting older, the water meters are getting older and they do have like 350 meters at a time that they're not getting readings on. And this is an issue. And so they are looking into other, other meters that could be used. Um, there are towns around us that use different meters that have like one meter that they don't get a reading on when they go to do it. So they are looking at upgrading the meters. Um, but in the meantime, we do need to make some changes to the, to the ordinance for helping them come up with some sort of an estimate. Any further discussion? Council Varela. Thank you, President Hapworth. Um, I would not be in favor of this being passed tonight. I would much rather see this go into Ordinance License Legal Affairs for a bigger discussion. Um, meaning because one of my biggest concerns is when is that average being taken? Is it being taken in the summer? Is it being taken in the winter? Um, you know. <laughs> There is a problem with these Neptune meters. Um, personally, we've had problems with them. I've had neighbors where the meters just explode and you have a water leak. I think that, you know, we have to be careful about this because what is that historical average for each household? Um, for someone like me, I use up to 75,000 to 100,000 gallons of water, municipal water, a, a year. Um, and I guess my concern is with other people that use a deduct meter, which is not a lot of residents here in Salem. So for that reason, I do think we need to talk to engineering about what the intent here with this uh, move is. Thank you. Is that a motion, Councilor Varela? Yes, that's a motion. We have a second? Seeing none. I'll second that. I'll second that. Councilor Prosniewski seconds. Um, any further discussion? So on the motion to send to committee the ordinance to amend an ordinance relative to water and sewer. All those in favor? One, two, three, seven, eight, nine. Any opposed? 
Matter carries. Co-posted. I'd be fine with co-posted, sorry. Okay, so let's just do that one more time just, just to be safe. Um, so on Council Varela's motion to send to um, to count the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs an ordinance to amend an ordinance relative to water and sewers, co-posted with the Committee of the Whole. Um, all those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Council Merkel, I'm sorry. Um, further communications from the mayor. We've been ordered that the City Council hereby approves the submittal of the City of Salem's application for federal assistance to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for the CDBG funds. Note that Councilor Varela has recused himself. Councilor Merkel. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. I move for adoption. Councilor Merkel moves for adoption under discussion. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. Uh, this is just to approve the submittal, uh, uh, submittal of uh, the city's application for federal funds. Uh, I'd like to offer some additional information uh, quickly uh, for the public. I'll also add to receive the federal funds, the city is required to develop annual action plans, uh, which put into action the goals from the strategies of our five-year consolidation plan from 2020. And the fiscal year 25 action plan draft is available uh, as part of the public review process. There's a 30-day public comment period that started on April 3rd. And there's a public hearing uh, for this uh, for anyone that's interested on April 18th at 6 at the City Hall Annex. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, on Council Merkel's motion for adoption of the city's application, all those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Mayor's informational page. We have a letter from the mayor submitting um, a request to the council for the Committee of the Whole to meet for the purpose of hearing a presentation from the Department of Planning regarding smart growth zoning overlay districts and the housing development incentive program. Councilor Prosniewski. Were you supposed to recuse yourself? Or? Not for this one, no. Okay. No, I'm confused. Gonna... Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that this be referred to the Committee of the Whole. <laughs> Councilor Prosniewski moves that this be referred to the Committee of the Whole under discussion. Uh, not at this point. We can do that in committee. Thank you. Any further discussion? None. On Councilor Prosniewski's motion to refer to the Committee of the Whole, all those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Motions, orders, and resolutions, none. Committee reports, none. Communications from city officials. We have the city solicitor submitting the following order relative to outdoor dining. Councilor Cohen. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. Uh, I, move, I move to separate uh, Couch Dog Brewing Company and O'Neill's from Bella Verona, and that Couch Dog Brewing and O'Neill's uh, is adopted. So uh, Councilor Cohen moves to divide the question to take up O'Neill's and Couch Dog first, then Bella Verona second. Uh, do we have a second? Councilor Merkel seconds. Um, any discussion? Uh, thank you. Uh, I guess just, just discussion on splitting the question, which I would assume there's no, no discussion there. No discussion. Um, on the matter of O'Neill's and Couch Dog, Councilor Cohen. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. Uh, spoke to our building commissioner uh, who reviewed the applications and um, and she made a couple so just, of- Sorry, sorry, Councilor Cohen, real quick. Do, what is your, what's your motion on the first? Oh, I'm sorry, I move that we adopt. Councilor Cohen moves for adoption under discussion. Thank you. In my discussions with the building commissioner, she made a couple of important points. One, um, the applications are in the planning stage. Uh, they haven't been implemented. It's really important that her department uh, make sure that whatever is approved is adhered to when um, they receive approval and start setting up their outdoor dining and felt that both Couch Dog Brewing and O'Neill's Irish Pub um, merited approval. Any further discussion? 
Seeing none. On Councillor Cohen's motion for adoption of the outdoor dining applications for O'Neill's and Couch Dog. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Councillor Cohen. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. Regarding Bella Verona, I move that we table. Councillor Varela moves to table. I'm sorry. Councillor Cohen on the application by uh, by Vela Verona. Councillor Cohen moves to table. Second. Seconded by Councillor Morcello. And I guess the matter is tabled. Do we still vote on it? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, all those in favor? The matter carries. Sorry, folks. Uh, let's see, further commute, oh, we already did that. On to page 16, petitions. We have the following public guide license applications. Council Morcello. Thank you, President, I move that these be granted. Council Morcello moves these be granted. On Council Morcello's motion, these be adopted. All those in favor? Any opposed? The matter carries. Further petitions. We have the following license applications for secondhand clothing and secondhand valuable. Council Marcello. Thank you, President. I move that these be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. Council Marcello moves these be referred to the Committee on, Commu on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. On Council Marcello's motion to refer these to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Further petitions. We have a request from Camillo Devane to hold a hearing on his denial of his taxi operator license. Council Marcello. Thank you, President. I move that this be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs to hold a hearing within executive session if necessary. Council Marcello moves this be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs for a hearing. All those in favor? Any opposed? The matter carries. Further petitions. We have two claims. Council Marcello. Mm -hmm. Thank you, President. I move that this be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. Council Marcello moves this be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. All those in favor? Any opposed? The matter carries. Further petitions. We have um, three drain layer contractor operator license applications. Council Marceau. Thank you, President. I move that these be granted. Council Marceau moves these be granted. All those in favor? Any opposed? The matter carries. Further petitions. We have one drain layer bond. Council Marceau. Thank you, President. I move that this be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs and returned approved. Council Marceau moves this be referred to the Committee on Community on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs and returned approved. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. <clears throat> Councilor Prosnuski. I'll let the record show that Councilors Hapworth and Cohen have recused themselves for the following matters. Uh, unfinished business. We have the second passage of an ordinance to amend an ordinance relative to short term rentals. Councilor Marcillo. Thank you, President. I move for adoption for second passage. Councilor Marcillo moves for adoption for second passage under discussion. No discussion. No discussion. All those in favor? All those opposed? Matter carries. Further unfinished business. We have the second passage of an ordinance to amend an ordinance relative to certificates of fitness. <laughs> Council Marcello. Thank you, President. I move for adoption for second passage. Council Marcello moves for adoption for second passage. Under discussion. No discussion. Uh, no discussion. All those in favor? All those opposed? Matter carries. Councilor Hapworth, President Hapworth. Further unfinished business. We have the second passage of an ordinance relative to traffic, section 51. Councilor Varela. Thank you, President Hapworth. They move that with adoption for second passage. Councilor Varela moves for adoption for second passage. Under discussion? No discussion. Councilor Varela moves for adoption for second passage on ordinance relative to traffic. All those in favor? Any opposed? The matter carries. Councilor Prosniewski. Motion that the meeting be adjourned.
Councilor Prosniewski moves for adjournment. All those in favor? Any opposed? We're adjourned.